Salute, mob tube. So today I want to tell you part two of the John Vesey story. Now, in part one of this story, we discussed John Vesey's early years and what led to him, get, <clears throat> him getting involved with the Philly mob. We left off at the point where Joey Molino got sent to prison on a parole violation, and John Stanford gave his guys the order to kill anyone and everyone suspected to have been involved in the attempted hit on Stanford and his son. Um, one of the men suspected to have taken part in that hit was Frank Baldino Sr., and he would become John Vesey's next target. Now, before we get to that, there's one very important thing that took place after the Molino uh, Changlini hit. John Vesey received the highest honor that can be given by the mafia, and he became a made man. Vesey's savage violence eventually earns him the mob's ultimate sign of respect. Stampa makes him a made man. When you're made, you get you get a lot of benefits. I mean, you become part of the mafia. You become part of the Costa Nostra. You're in for life. Uh, you take this little oath. You guys join arms, and you become a family. I mean, it's a great that's a great feeling to be made. I mean, you're you're part of something that's forever. Now, later on in life, uh, John Vesey had said that um, he was never proud to have been. Uh, um, made into the mafia, not then or now. Um, now, in this clip, he certainly seemed happy about it, but with a guy like VZ, you honestly never know. So, uh, on to the Baldino hit. Now, Frank Baldino Sr. Uh, was a longtime friend of the VZ family. He was a friend uh, to his sister, his mother, and John knew him his whole life also. So, this led to VZ having reservations about the hit. Um, but as it always does in the Mafia, Vizi's new family came first. On September 17th, 1993, Frank Baldino Sr. was eating dinner at uh, Philadelphia's Melrose Diner while John Vizi sat across the street in a parked car waiting. Once Baldino finished eating din dinner, he exited the building and got into his white Cadillac Seville. At this moment, uh, Vizi got out of his own vehicle and ran across the parking lot to Baldino's car. Once he got to the vehicle, um, Vizi called out Frank's name. And by the time Frank turned his head to see who it was, John Vizi had already stuck his gun through the window of the car. As soon as he walked out to get in his car, that's when we broke the run to the car. And I said, Frank. I put my hands in the window. He tried to lean back, but the bullets were coming. Three times in his head. And then I put it on his chest and shot some more. He was, there was nothing left of him. Frank Baldino was a guy that I do regret killing. And with that, the murder of Baldino marked the beginning of VZ's downfall. Uh, he was out of control. Okay, he, he could be heard bragging about hits that he had carried out and jobs he had done for the mafia. He got a tattoo of a gun with two spent bullets, which symbolized the murders he had committed. And he started uh, beating up and shaking down members of his own organization. Bottom line is he was bringing way too much unwanted attention upon the Philly mob. After the Boldino murder... From that night on, everything started really going downhill for me at that point. I mean, like I was telling Stanford, this kid's crazy. He's unmanageable. We can't control him. He's not listening to nobody. Now you have everyone going against me. Yeah, uh, as it usually happens. So Billy Vizi is the first to tell his brother the bad news. Um, the word on the street is that Stanford put a contract out on his life. Now, looking out for his brother's best interest and his life, uh, Billy instructs his brother to turn government witness against Stanford and the family, uh, become an informant and rat on the Philly mob. On December 30th, 1993, VZ had his first meeting with the FBI. He said, man, you got to turn yourself in. I said, what are you talking about? You want me to rat? Billy sees what his little brother cannot. John must become a government witness or die. He started crying, and, you know, i never seen my brother cry before. And he tells me we got to go to the feds. He's got a meeting set up. So I thought about it for a minute. They want to kill me? I got two choices. 
they can kill me or I can cooperate, get a deal and go home. I mean, I'm, I'm weighing, why go to the pen when you can send a friend, you know? That's the way I looked at it. Why go to the pen when you could send a friend? Crazy. So um, the FBI was thrilled, okay? They had been trying to take down the Philly mob for years, and uh, now they finally had a real-life member of, of Cosa Nostra willing to give them every detail in order to save his own life. Um, in striking the deal with the FBI, Vizi agreed to plead guilty to his own involvement in, in murder and in racketeering cases and face jail time of his own. Also, um, his testimony wasn't going to be enough. He would have to gather intelligence of his own by wearing a wire around Stanford and the family. And um, on the same day Stanford visited the FBI and agreed to wear a wire, word was already spreading through the street that VZ had become an informant. Uh, one evening, on his way home from a meeting with the FBI, VZ received a call from two of Stanford's guys, Frank Martinez and Al, uh, or I'm sorry, Vincent Al Pajamas Pagano. They told VZ there's a new business opportunity uh, that is sure to smooth things over between VZ and the family. And VZ, knowing it was a stupid move, agreed to meet the two men alone and unarmed. I look back now, man, I was the dumb person in the whole universe, probably. I know there's a contract on me, and I know where it's coming from, but I still didn't believe it. It just never registered that somebody would shoot me. I didn't think anyone had the heart to actually shoot me. I used to be the hunter, and I was being hunted. You know, I was the prey. He said, bye, John, John. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, I can still hear them shots. Three shots. I put my hand on the back of my head like this. I see the blood in my hand. I'm like, you just shoot me. And I turned around, he shot me again in the chest. And I started pistol whipping. I went after him now. Started hitting him. Bam. 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 And then a knife shows up. Knife falls on the floor. And I grabbed it, and I just kind of reached up, got him in the eye, and pulled the boy back here. I run out of the building. Somebody called the ambulance and took me to the hospital. VC's attackers barely escape with their lives and are ordered to stand trial on aggravated assault, conspiracy, and weapons charges. Miraculously, VC sustains only minor injuries. One came out front, one's in my neck, one they cut out the back of my head, and I got one in my ribcage. I, I took a stab wound here, one here, they cut the side of my finger here, and then I had a bunch of cuts all over the place. And my brother took it really, really bad. He came up to the hospital, and he's telling me, man, I'm sorry, I love you. But I'm like, man. Forget it. You know, nobody else watching a football game a day later. <laughs> now, uh, later in court, uh, John Vesey testified that um, from all the years of fighting in the street as a young man and being hit with bats and pipes, a doctor had told him that his skull had basically developed a, a protective layer of calcium deposits. And that might just be what saved his life that night. Um, so who knows, but now not only did they fail to kill VZ in this murder attempt, but it actually only made VZ even more determined to testify on October 5th, 1995, John VZ is set to testify against the Philadelphia mob, um, when possibly the greatest tragedy of John's lifetime takes place. His brother, Billy is gunned down on his way to work. My brother was killed, um, let me take one second, all right, please. He 
was leaving his house. Shooters came and ambushed the car. My brother would do anything for anybody. He was always there for me. And it created such a big vacuum in my family's world. I can call them up, I can go visit them, I can be in South Philadelphia, and they'll still have an excuse why they can't come see me. When John Vesey heard the news. He quite naturally was destroyed by it. I just broke out. I, mean, I don't think I ever cried that much in my life. I don't think I ever felt any pain even close to that. The trial of mob boss John Stampha began in September 1995 and lasted for two months. For three days, Vesey's testimony gripped the city of Philadelphia. My experience in that courtroom watching John Vesey testify was clearly the most riveting testimony I've ever seen in a courtroom. Vesey describes Stampha's involvement in extortion and illegal gambling activities, as well as linking Stampha to the murders of Mike Cinglini and Frank Baldino. After the testimony of John Vesey, John Stampha and a number of associates are in jail for the rest of their lives. But I can tell you this, I felt really good when I was in trial and I got to, uh, tell the truth because I didn't need to lie. If I'm going to rat, at least I know I rat it right. I mean, I don't want to be a half a rat. I don't want to say why well, I rat it, but they're coming home. Hell no, they're not coming home. John Vesey's testimony against John Stanford and the other members of John Stanford's crew was crippling to the Philadelphia Mafia. Stampha and 20 other high-ranking members of the mob were convicted and sent to prison Stampha is currently serving five consecutive life sentences and has been replaced as the boss of the Philly mob. Today, the criminal organization reportedly has only 20 remaining members. John Vesey also went to prison after confessing to two murders. In 2000, he was released and given a new identity in the Federal Witness Protection Program. I got a job cleaning toilets. I was getting like, I think, $8, $9 an hour. His new life isn't what he imagined when he first agreed to work for the Mafia. And you got me, a street kid, don't know anything about the mob, don't know about the rules. Then they're telling me about, we're going to do this thing for you, and you've got to get the respect, and everything is going to be good. they got a lot of money. I says, I already got respect. I ain't worried about that. I don't know what this is, and I don't want it. Members of the mob care about nobody. They care about themselves. Do they care about John Vesey? No. They cared about him and that he was a machine. He could kill for him, he could extort, he could make money. They didn't care for him, they don't care for anybody. Today, John Vesey lives in an undisclosed location with his wife and children. However it ends, it's gonna end. I ain't gonna worry about it, I don't think about it, I don't go pray on it. Vesey realizes the empty promises of the mob led him into a life of crime he now regrets. No, I'm not proud of the mafia. I wasn't proud that I got made in the mafia. Then or now, I was an evil person. I'm not going to try to say I wasn't. Am I a bad person now? Uh, absolutely not. Um, depends on who you ask, really. Um, now, when while Vizi was testifying, the jury absolutely loved him. Uh, they found him down to earth, uh, funny, and very believable. At one point, when a defense attorney asked Vizi, what he wears glasses for, uh, Vizi replied, well, after I got shot in the head by your client, my right eye is a little bad. <laughs> um, at the end of the trial, the jury convicted John Stampha and seven associates of racketeering, extortion, and a dozen gangland murders. The judge sentenced Stampha to five consecutive life sentences, and uh, the seven associates also got life sentences or long prison stretches. Later on, John would say that he actually felt bad for putting Stampha away. He said he truly liked him, and he still likes him till this day. I feel bad for John, actually. To be perfectly honest, you, you feel bad for John Stampha? 
Sure, he's got kids, and you know the man who sent thing. two people to kill you. He was lied to. I know there are folk who watch 60 Minutes uh, in prison. So I'd imagine if John Stanfus saw that you feel bad for him, I'm sure that would give him great comfort. Well, he might give him great comfort. He might say, "I hope that you're not feel so good for the rest of your life. I hope you die, you bastard." I don't know what he's going to say. I don't really care though. That's your impersonation of John Stanfus. Well, I can do him a lot better than that, but let me hear. But I'm gonna go hunt. It's six to thirty in the morning. It's another dog over here. You needed the dog to catch the rabbit. The rabbit is in the marinator with the wine and the olive oil overnight. It tastes like a chicken. Mm, so good. But anyway, that's how John Stanford talks. The well, former mob boss talking about food. Him. If he's talking about killing, he would be a little different, you know. I'm gonna tell you, boom, boom, boom. Shoot at this son of a bitch right away. You don't understand what I'm gonna tell you. This boom, boom, boom. Take it. You need to pull it. The shotgun. You don't miss it. You know. He, very animated boss. John Stanford from the old school. Yeah. People, so, every shock, everybody should be shocked when they're blown up. Mm -hmm. yeah, it was not like <laughs> regular. You put in the bomb, put in the bomb, the bomb will go boom, and it's no more. It goes away. Problem solved. <laughs> I love that impersonation. Um, so John Vesey himself wound up spending about, le uh, spending about 11 years in prison on murder and racketeering charges that were part of his plea agreement. After serving his prison time, uh, Vesey entered the witness protection program. And his already crazy life took an even more dramatic turn. Uh, it was really as, as, as outrageous as his life as a mobster, uh, as his life as a mobster was. Um, Vesey, a barely literate uh, high school dropout, started at the bottom. He got a job cleaning toilets for about $9 an hour. And then on a whim, uh, he answered an ad for a car salesman. And he discovered that he was good at it. Uh, he was a natural. Um, he was so good as, at a, as a salesman that at one point uh, he was pulling in about 20000 a month. Now, uh, he rose up the ladder. Um, uh, he got many promotions as a car salesman. And they said that uh, he had bought, I believe, four houses. Um, he was driving uh, Porsches and Lamborghinis. Guy was making a ton of money legitimately. Now, it gets crazier after all this. And if you look on YouTube, you could see uh, many, many videos about some of the stuff he did after he was released from prison. Um, the car salesman job actually ended in a funny way. Um, an FBI agent that was hired to handle security for a ri uh, an ex FBI agent, I'm sorry, that was hired to handle security for a rival dealership, got a little suspicious about John Vesey's real identity, and basically found out exactly who he was. At that point, uh, Vesey was fired from uh, from the car dealership he worked for. Um, there is till this day. Uh, many people in South Philly who have uh, orders of protection from John Vesey. He has uh, gone back to Philly about 20 times or so. And when he's there, he usually makes phone calls. He threatens people. He threatens people's wives. Um, he's kind of got a split personality. One minute, it's all positivity. The next minute, he wants to kill all his enemies. For a long time uh, after he was released, um, you know, he has said to have wanted uh, revenge on the people that killed his brother, quite obviously. And a lot of the threats he had made were based on that. He would make threats on Facebook. He even made a video at one point where he was shoveling snow, kind of acting like he was digging a grave. And he put that on Facebook, directed at uh, somebody in South Philly. So some other crazy things had happened, um, things you wouldn't expect. He was a speaker at Westchester University once. Um, and he had some health problems that he was kind of saved by a miracle, I guess you can say. So his life only got crazier after he got out of uh, witness protection. Uh, you know, and if, if you look these things up, there's a lot of stuff to find. So that's the crazy story of John Vesey. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I worked hard on this. and. Um, you know, like I said, I think John Vesey's story is one of the most fascinating uh, within the mob, especially if you're only considering the Philly mob. 
Uh, and you guys should do more research and maybe even read his book. His book is called The Hitman. You could check that out and find more. All right, everybody. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I don't know when I'll be doing a live next, uh, but I'll see you then. And until next time, I love you all and salute.